we have a special guest with us, Erin Souza, who is someone who has experienced breast implant illness in the past. And that's what we're going to really dive into today. So thank you so much, Erin, for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. Awesome. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about your history, about your story, about what happened that led to the breast implant illness realization. You know, to be honest, for me, I, w I was one of those people where symptoms came on really, really fast. It was only about three-ish months after I got my implants that I started to notice that things just weren't the same in my body that they were before. It started with a very slow weight gain. You know, I was just looking and feeling puffy all of the time. My face was you know, super puffy. My clothes weren't fitting right. Then it turned into exhaustive fatigue. It didn't matter if I went to bed at 8 PM and slept until eight the next morning. I woke up super tired. My hair started falling out. I was cold all the time, kind of like hypothyroid symptoms. And at this point, I didn't know that it had anything to do with my implants. I didn't even know what breast implant illness was. I kept going to my doctor and telling them, you know, something's wrong. I'm just not myself. Like I'm not doing anything different. I'm working out the same. I'm sleeping the same, eating the same. And so they ran a ton of blood work for me and everything came back. Perfect. Not one marker was out of range. Of course, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, okay, something's still not right. I went and saw a functional medicine doctor Mm -hmm. And they did the same blood work and they're like, yeah, everything looks good. And I went back to her probably two or three times in the matter of a few months. And finally she was like, you know, your thyroid does look a little bit sluggish. Those are her words. You know, it's a little bit out of optimal ranges. Let's put yeah. you on some thyroid medication and see if that works. And in hindsight, like looking back, I think she was just trying to shut me up and get me out of the office because the thyroid medication really didn't do anything. So yeah. I stayed on my journey to try to figure out what was wrong with myself. And I ended up stumbling across some Facebook groups and I don't even remember how, but it was around BII <laughs> and I spent hours in the very first group groups that I joined and was like, oh my gosh, it was the aha moments and all the dots just connected hearing other ladies' stories and all their symptoms were the same as mine. Mm -hmm. And the timeline was just a dead giveaway too. You know, three months after I got them in, it was like the cards started falling, you know, and common for a lot of other women as well around that three month or is it different? No, not at all. I have some people that friends, people that I work with, you know, they've had their implants for 10 to 19 years. And oh, wow. most of those years are actually symptom free. <laughs> so really there's no timeline on breast implant illness. You know, you can ask me, I, I may have an unpopular opinion, but I really think that it hits everybody at some point in time. Definitely. Some people are more prone to it depending on, you know, your risk factors and whatnot, yeah. but yeah. Uh, for me, I was just that canary. <laughs> it hit me really fast. So once you found that in that Facebook group, the people talking about it, then what were the next steps you took from there? So immediately I started researching for doctors that would do explant. And that's, this was back in 2018. So breast implant illness wasn't like it is today. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still not talked about as much as it should be, but it wasn't on the forefront. And there was only, you know, a handful of doctors that were doing explants and, and even less that were only doing explants. And that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody who specialized in that. So I started researching and quickly found out that insurance doesn't cover the removal and that it was double the cost or more to get them out than it was to get them in. So that was kind of a roadblock for me, as I know it is for many other women out there. Yeah, that's definitely something that we've heard from clients as well. Yeah, it's like, 
I've come to the consensus in my mind that I need to get rid of these. I know that they're the reason that I'm sick and they're not helping me move forward with my health, but the expense to have them removed is so massive. And it's, when do you kind of, how did you come to the terms, come to terms with the fact that it was an expense, but it was worth it? <laughs> I was feeling so terrible at that point that I was just like, I don't care what it takes. I started trimming the fat off of all my extra expenses. I stopped, you know, going out to get my daily coffee. I stopped eating out so much. I was selling my clothes at that point on Mercari and Poshmark wow. and all these uh, consignment places. And ultimately I did end up taking out a medical loan to cover mm -hmm. the rest of the cost because to me, it was just like, I, I need them out. You know, I will say that on the Facebook groups that a lot of the testimonials that women give on there with their before and after pictures are like, Hey, just get the X plant. Like you'll feel a hundred percent better. And I really was hopeful for that. That was kind of like my push and drive to mm -hmm. say, I don't care what it takes. Like, I just want to get these things out. Yeah. But that really, we'll get into this later, but that, that wasn't really the case for me. <laughs> Explant is absolutely the first thing that has to happen, but there's definitely more that has to happen after that. When you say explant, cause I know there's, there are all, tor all sorts of different surgeons out there, but when you specifically want breast implants removed. I know there's a better road to go down. Can you explain that a little bit for people who might be in that position too? Yeah. So you want to pick somebody, a surgeon who does explant surgeries only, you know, I, I shouldn't say you, you want to, you would probably want to search for somebody like that in your area. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't exist like that in your area, make sure that you're interviewing them and that they've done a lot of explant surgeries taking them out takes a lot more skill than it does to put them in. It's a lot more riskier of a surgery because the capsules that form around the implant, they can become adhered to the rib cage and the chest wall and, you know, the hearts right there, the lungs. And you just want somebody with that confidence and experience when you're going into surgery. Okay. So, yeah. I have a list of surgeons that actually I give to people that believe in BII. That's another thing. You don't want somebody who's like, eh, it doesn't really exist, but sure, I'll take them out. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're probably not going to be so committed to making sure that they get the whole entire capsule out when they do surgery. Of course, with any kind of procedure like that, you want to make sure you have a good fit with your doctor yeah. or surgeon, whoever it is. Absolutely. Someone that aligns with what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yes. Someone's actually listening to your concerns would be great. Absolutely. <laughs> can you explain, we're backing up a little bit, but can you explain yeah. exactly what breast implant illness is and what the symptoms are for people? Yeah. So for me, um, it was a collection of 20 something different symptoms Amazing. and breast implant illness is really a term that's used to describe a collection of symptoms that people feel. There's no medical diagnosis for it at this point, which I really think there should be because those of us that have lived through it know that it's mm -hmm. just as real as any other diagnosable disease out there. Yeah. But because the symptoms, there's like over 70 something symptoms now that can be associated with it. And because there are so many, it really overlaps with other different types of diagnosis and things out there that it's hard for people to pinpoint, well, is it this, is it this, you know, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> in my opinion, I don't think that it's a hundred percent the body reacting to the implant. Yes, that is part of it. But I think that a lot of the quote unquote illness comes from the body reacting to the chemicals, the heavy metals, the biofilms, everything that leach off around that implant into the body, right? That's how we get bacterial overgrowth, uh, 
candida overgrowth, yeah. parasites, you know, mold, all these things that feed off of those chemicals, heavy metals and biofilm. Very interesting. Yeah, that's a lot for the body then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Especially as you're mentioning this, like it's not, it must be very challenging to be going through that and having all these symptoms and they can be so many other things. Yeah. How did you hone in on the fact that it was specifically like breast implant illness for you? Because of my timeline, I think that was my biggest thing was like, okay, three months after I got them put in, I didn't change anything. And then my health just started to go downhill, you know, for somebody else that the symptoms come on later, it may be harder for them to tie in. The bit, another big thing for me was that my blood work, I mean, I didn't know any different with functional medicine back then. And mm -hmm. my blood work was perfect. There was nothing else really to blame it on. There was no other life instances that had happened or experiences like, oh, this could have caused some trauma or something to throw mm -hmm. my health off. So for me, I, I guess I'm lucky in that sense to where it was very obvious. Yes. Yeah. That's, and a lot of people that's, I mean, you were listing at the beginning, the symptoms that you had, and, and then you said you were put on thyroid medication. And it was like so many women. And I, I had that in the past too. And it was a functional medicine doctor and yes, they do more complicated blood work, but it's just putting you on medication. And it's like, exactly. why are you having the problems that you're having? That's yes. not what's being figured out. And it's, I think it's great that you had that experience because now you have this story to share with people, but the three month timeline, yeah, gave you this narrow window of like, okay, when did this start? And after 19 years, as you mentioned, if someone's fine for that time and all of a sudden they start mm -hmm. getting illness, how do you think like, oh, it's from something that I did 19 years ago, yeah. right? So yeah, that's, that's pretty powerful. Did so you mentioned a little bit before, what was the experience like after you had them out? Like, does how long does it take or, you know, are things resolved quickly? Anyways, what is that like? So to be completely honest, you know, I did experience some relief of symptoms after surgery, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't that full hundred percent transformation that I was looking for. I still was having fatigue. I was still having headaches, still having digestive issues. Mm -hmm. There, there was things that still, I was like, okay, I, I went to the, to one of the top surgeons that exists. I had a full on block, which is like the gold standard of explant surgeries. And I was like expecting to feel like all these testimonies. I wanted to be one of those testimonials, you know, and it, I, I actually became kind of depressed and stressed when I wasn't one of those people. I kept thinking like, what went wrong, you know? And after that, I spent another two years hopping from specialists to different functional medicine doctors and providers and spent thousands of dollars and never really found a total wellness, like sustainable, you know, I'd feel better for a little bit and then I'd go back to square one. Mm -hmm. And that frustration and lack of support and care that I got is actually what pushed me to go back to school for functional medicine. I really didn't have a plan to do this for my career. Uh, I was a registered dental hygienist. I was having fun doing that. Um, but the transformation that I got in my health, my from, you know, doing things myself, the way that I learned was like, this is it. Like, I'm so passionate about this now. I need to help every woman out there that's in my shoes feeling this way after explant. That's awesome. And it's perfect because you, you, with going through it, you can relate to them and understand and bring that experience and kind of, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. This is, this, these are the things that can happen. It's, and I assume that you've, with different people that you've spoken with and probably even like the Facebook groups, just kind of seeing what the array of experiences are, you can kind of speak to how this person, what could, they could experience, kind of set them up for what their journey can look like. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's valuable too that you are one that 
was not the success immediate fix mm -hmm. yeah yeah as well because well, like amanda said you you know what it's like to be like what did i do wrong what could it have been what could have been done differently and it's it's at that point, it's a decision, right? Of do I just accept this or do I decide to continue to pursue and focus on my health? And so yeah. that's very powerful for people to hear. So that's awesome. I think it's really important. There's, you know, through all my research and becoming like a breast implant illness expert, I have come across a study that I love to share with everybody because I think it gives women some comfort actually the study was done on women that have explanted and 97% of those women experienced relief of symptoms after explant, but only 23% of that 97% experienced full relief. The rest of them, which was actually the higher majority only experienced partial relief. Hmm. And I really just, like more than anything in this world, I want to dissolve that illusion for women that the healing stops at the explant because mm -hmm. I think it's so unfair not to have that expectation or thought in your head going into it that, Hey, like I might just be one of that higher percentage that doesn't find the relief that I was looking for. And then they don't know where to go what to do about it. You know, they're wasting years feeling yeah. not a hundred percent or maybe even worse, they regret their decision and they go get them again because they thought that wasn't the solution. Right. It can be so demoralizing when you think like, this is the fix. This is exactly what I need to do and like psych yourself up for it. And it is a big financial investment yes. as well. And then you do that and it's not the, the miracle that you were looking for. So that's, very powerful. I think that's really cool. Um, we're going to share the links to get in contact with you in the show notes as well. Mm -hmm. Are you able to share the study that you mentioned? Um, I'm, I'll put it on my website, the link okay. to it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Or, I'll, or maybe I'll put it in the freebie that they download. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yes. And there's a freebie as well. Can you explain the freebie a little bit? We're going to put that in the show notes for people as well to download. Sure. So the freebie has a guide. It's three ways to reverse chronic symptoms from BII. Um, it's a really good place to start, you know, just talking about getting to the root cause, um, working on your nutrition and healing your nervous system. I also have a bonus in there for anybody who wants to take a BII risk assessment. And this is really the risk assessment is for anybody that doesn't even know if they have BII, maybe somebody who's explanted and they're still experiencing symptoms. So it's just a really comprehensive going over symptoms and risk factors. Amazing. Do you have any, so you work with clients as well? I do. Do you have any success stories that you can share? I do. I do. I have a lot of success stories. <laughs> What's your favorite? my favorite honestly i think i think my favorite was i was working with this client and she didn't even she hadn't had an explant yet she was like i'm determined to keep them <laughs> i don't want to get rid of them let me just work with you on my gut health and everything to see how better i can how much better i can feel mm -hmm. and she got a couple months in and she was like, we would talk about explant and just the whole correlation. And she's like, you know, I think I'm going to move forward with explant. And she ended up going in for explant. They did the surgery. They went to, they sent her capsules to pathology and they found out that they had cancer. And that was the most powerful moment for her. Like, oh my gosh, if I would have never got those, she had no like signs or symptoms that she had any type of cancer or cells or anything. And they had never found any on any scans or anything like that. And it was just like, if I would have kept, she said, if I would have kept those in, you know, who knows where I would be 10 years from now, five years from now. Yeah. So Thank you so much, you know, and 
by the time she she continued on with her program after the explant and by the time she was done she was 100% symptom free and her testimonial was just like thank you so much for helping me get my life back you have completely validated like everything that I was feeling and now I can live my life without limitations or being scared for my future health. That's amazing. Yeah. The validation is so powerful too. Mm -hmm. That's something because we hear with clients all the time too. If it's something you've been suspecting for a long time and you keep hearing doctors say, your blood work is fine. There's nothing wrong with you. I had a gynecologist tell me it was probably all in my head when I had no period for five years. And that can be so demoralizing. Oh as well gosh. right and as women yeah. it's we're when it's anything hormone related but also i mean your breasts are a part of who you are mm-hmm. and so to have someone say to you like oh there's nothing wrong with you the validation that you provide people that would be huge in terms of mental mm-hmm. and emotional so many different ways it's amazing huge on the emotional i think oh yeah yeah, yeah. and i think that's another aspect that people don't address like there, there's so many little pieces to BII. It's not just all physical. Mm-hmm. In my program, I actually have a mind, body, spirit release specialist that comes in and does a session with my clients to help them release with that emotional aspect of it. Because, you know, no one really understands truly unless you go through it. And she happens to be a breast implant illness survivor as well. So it's kind of all tied in <laughs> the community yeah. in my program is, is strong with people that have all been through it and are very understanding. Of, mm. And you're you covering know. all the elements. It's not yeah. just removal. <laughs> it's the emotional context. It's the supplementation. It's supporting the body after the fact. Absolutely. The process, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any key messages you'd like to share for the listeners? My biggest thing is to test, don't guess, work, work with um, somebody who, you know, is an expert in the area that you're looking for help in and get support, you know, whether it be through a Facebook community or other people that, you know, through a program, the other people that have gone through it. I think that BII is very lonely (laughs) and you can't it's not something you can just go talk to your husband about or maybe Mm -hmm. your best friend who has never had implants or thought about implants you know the support that you receive from somebody who's gone through it is is invaluable you know amazing yeah so where can people get in contact with you? We will drop your website in the show notes. Are you on, what are your social, are you Facebook, Instagram? I have my Instagram, which is EC restorative. I'm on Facebook, Erin Souza. You can friend me there. I dabble on TikTok a little bit, <laughs> but not too much. My, my hook on there is also EC restorative. Perfect. Perfect. We'll share those in the show notes as well. So people can get in contact with you. Awesome. Um, what is your, so what is your program? You mentioned your program. What does that include or how does that help people? So I work, they, they can choose either one-on-one services or mm-hmm. a group program option. Both deliver amazing transformations, but are obviously completely different models. So it really just depends on the individual and what type of support level they're looking for. But the approach that I take encompasses functional lab testing, focuses on nutrition, the evaluation of hormones, immune system, digestion, detoxification, nervous system. And then, you know, based on all of those findings, that's how I'm able to customize a healing protocol for a client. And the goal that we're trying to reach with these clients is really just to restore their function and balance within their key body systems without using medications. And so, yeah, a lot of education, advocation, support, empowerment that moves along through my program. Fantastic. Uh, Anything else you want to cover at the end there? I was just going to, yeah. I love that you have a holistic approach. 
And that's definitely yeah. a way that we try and look at things as well. Like the whole body, you can't just focus on one area and not expect everything else to be affected by it. So exactly. I think it's very important, as you've mentioned, it can be very lonely and emotional stuff. It's not just because, I mean, I haven't had a breast implants or a breast implant illness, obviously. And mm -hmm. it's not just like, oh, you're going to get them out and now you're just going to get smaller bra sizes. You, there's so much more to it. There's so many layers to that. And I think it's very valuable that you add the emotional and everything that they need as well, the gut health, so many different things. So that's exactly. awesome. Really just getting to the why, you know, like with, with the emotional and nervous system and all these things connected in and the gut health and the balancing the minerals, you know, it really answers that question of like, why was your body such a good habitable environment for all these things to go wrong? Like, yes, mm -hmm. it circles back to that. The healing doesn't stop at the explant. Once you remove the implant and capsule and all those things, you've got all the pathogens and heavy metals and chemicals, and then all the bacteria, parasites, candida, and even mold that like to feed off those things still hanging out in your body. You know, they don't just naturally detox because, well, I would love to say like our liver and food, you know, eating food does it all. <laughs> A lot of us that have had implants, or even if you don't have implants, we have clogged and st stagnant drainage pathways mm -hmm. from these things that are in our body and our natural ability to detox gets impaired. And that's why people still feel bad. So when we use these functional labs to uncover these hidden stressors, I'll call them, you know, it helps us to get an exact roadmap of what that person needs. You know, it's not just like, guessing and saying oh you know based on your symptoms you look like you might need this mm -hmm. we don't I don't do that you know it's exactly it's based off of the person yes but also in correlation with their labs perfect yeah we agree yeah. it's not just a band-aid approach or anything you just don't <laughs> throw supplements or medications at it and expect it to you want to actually have a plan as you said and tackle those things to get someone better not just yeah exactly yeah in all forms too, not just uh, physically, but mentally, spiritually, everything. Everything. If there's someone listening to this, who's considering having mm -hmm. breast explant surgery, mm -hmm. is there a message you can leave for them in terms of inspiration or guidance that may be helpful? Do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I promise that it's always going to be the first step and don't be afraid to reach out for guidance from someone else. I mean, there's a lot of noise out there on the internet, the through Facebook groups. So you do have to be careful who you listen to, um, but make sure that you're doing your research through somebody who is an expert in the area not just like some random person who only had it themselves, you know, take everything with a grain of salt and just give yourself grace and patience. You know, if you don't feel amazing right away, then it's probably because there's deeper reasons why don't run out and feel like you need to, like it was the worst decision ever to get them out. Um, dig a little bit deeper, you know, Amazing. I think that's an excellent note to leave people with today. And if you have any questions, if you need support, we're going to share Erin's contacts in the show notes. So definitely check that out. Check out her website, check out the free guide that's in there. It's very, I think it's very powerful and it's going to be so beneficial for so many people. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Erin, for joining us and to everyone else. We will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.